if we go back to this uh, to this test, the channel dot map, we are cheating a bit in the test we've been writing because this is yes a test for our map uh, method. But what we know is that map can also take one argument, which is the number of workers, right? So what we'll do is we'll write another test uh, that verifies that we can indeed um, run on multiple workers rather than just on a single on a single one. So I'm going to be defining uh, chmap workers for. In this case, we're going to be spawning four workers. Uh, each one is going to be picking a particular value and transforming it and throwing it back into the um, into the mix. I'm going to do something to show you that it is indeed what's going on here. I'm going to be introducing a random slip here uh, between, say, 0 and 0 0.2 seconds. Rand is a random number generator that will return a number between 0 and 1. Uh, so if I multiply by 0 0.2, the maximum value is going to be 0 0.2. So, uh, so we want to... And why am I doing this? Because I'm doing this because uh, now workers, I'm going to be doing 0 to 1 to 8. So we expect that each worker will process an average of two values. That's not going to be necessarily the case. It might be that a worker is still sleeping while another one is uh, waking up, finish processing a, a number and goes to the other one. So what I wanted to show you is that for sure, the order in which we receive the values out of squares is going to be quite uh, quite random. Uh, this is because of the fact that in the process in the processing step we introduce a, um, a non deterministic deterministic uh, statement, which is one where we sleep for a random amount of time uh, between zero and zero point two. Why am I doing this? To show you that we are indeed running on multiple workers. If I were to add a an arbitrary sleep in the previous example, which we'll do in a second, nothing would change. I would still be receiving values in order because there's only one worker. The worker is uh, grabbing a value, transforming it, sleeping, and then going back into the loop. And so we receive all the values in the right order. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you that if I print the value I receive, and then the only thing I can verify really is that the value I received uh, I don't even need to do this. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I got refuse squares equals. Yeah, this makes sense. I'm going to be printing. I don't want to print S. S is going to be a number from 1 to 8. So we're going to have to change our, our test. All we can do is we can do each for each value between one and eight, which is going to be, sorry, for each value between uh, the square one and the square eight, uh, we verify that squares dot receive uh, something slightly different. Sorry, just thinking about what makes sense here. What we really want to do is we want to for eight times. Uh, verify that the value we receive should be included in this uh, in this set. Expected squares is going to be this set, and then what we do eight times we verify that the number we receive over squares is included in the in the array. And I think there's should there's something like should be included is a thing. I'm just going to go to the browser and check on the expectations. Contain. Contain is the one I was looking for. Should contain. So it's the other way around. Expected square should contain, um, but I call it an S equals squares dot receive should contain S. And this is all we can do really. And I'm going to print S to show you that we're printing values in an order that is a bit unexpected. Let's see what goes on here. I'm gonna make a bit of space. Uh, right.
expected 149.16.25x on to include nil. Why is this happening? Because trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, expected square is just a static array that we define. And here we are for eight times, we are doing squares. Right, sorry, my bad. I should slip first and then return the value because remember that the last statement in the block is gonna be the value that is returned by the block. Now it happens to be the case that the value returned by the block is gonna be the one that is pushed into the downstream channel. Now, if we go back and look at what's going on, interestingly enough, we're generating, we're seeing the number arriving into the result stream, uh, into the square stream as 125416. So completely out of order. This is because we introduced some, uh, some non-deterministic um, uh, sleep uh, just before doing the processing. And this actually shows you that uh, the processors are running indeed concurrently. Um, I also want to show you this. If I turn the worker numbers to one and I save again, we're gonna see the numbers being printed in order. Again, this is because each value uh, from CH is gonna be read. Uh, we're gonna be sleeping for a while, then transform the value and return it, but there's gonna be no concurrency. And so as you can see from the list, all the numbers show up in the expected order. So really it's a bit hard to verify um, anything more than that, mm, but, uh, this is enough to show us that we are indeed processing in parallel.